What is beige anyway? Well, it's actually over there. Just stub my toe. <laughs> oh, I was trying to get all profound and then uh, there's karma. The thing is, there are so many different beiges out there, right? So I wanted to narrow the scope and just talk about a specific beige by Benjamin Moore called Grant Beige. If you came to hear about that color, you can show your excitement by hitting that like button for me. It actually is pretty exciting because YouTube gives you a little fireworks show whenever you hit like. Give it a shot. Also, be sure to stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to compare Grant Beige to Manchester Tan. I'm gonna help a lot of you decide between which one to pick. For all of my subscribers watching, you know what to expect with our show Color Code. We're gonna do some investigative work and crack the code on color code HC83, AKA Grant Beige. One of the first things I think of when I hear beige is neutral. Paint colors that we typically label as being neutral, they're relatively passive. They're typically a little undersaturated and they don't have very strong color hues that are prevalent. They're more just subtle undertones that show up. And they perhaps have a fairly even balance of warm and cool elements, making them pretty versatile and therefore popular. I would say that Grant Beige really does tick a lot of these boxes. It's not necessarily the king or queen of all mid-tone neutrals, but I'd say it was notable enough to be selected as part of Benjamin Moore's historical color collection. If you know me, you know I gotta check out this color's LRV. Woo, 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 woo. What's up? Just filming. <laughs> Which is the light reflectance value? So from zero to 100, the higher that number gets, the lighter or brighter the color will appear. And this is really handy information to have for any paint color you're looking at. So when we look at Grant Beige, it sits at 55.81. And that sounds like it would be pretty average in regards to darkness, which technically it is being nearly right in the middle of all colors. But I would say my ideal kind of range for wall colors specifically, because I'm assuming that a large portion of people watching are looking for interior wall colors, my sweet spot is more so in the 60s. Typically speaking, colors are not really evenly represented all the way from zero to 100 LRV. Normally you'll see black paint colors that go all the way down to two or three, which is pretty close to zero. But on the other hand, when you get to the upper limit, you usually hover around the low 90s as your brightest and lightest colors, which is quite far off from the ever elusive 100 LRV rating. So really we're not talking about a zero to 100 scale, it's more of a two to 92 scale. And the easy way to split colors up is into thirds. So you have zero to 30 LRV for those dark colors, 30 to 60 for those mid-tone colors, and then 60 plus. I guess that was a convoluted way of saying that being at the bottom or the dark end of the lightest chunk of paint colors is one of the best places for a color to be because they'll typically have enough depth of color to have an impact but not so much where the color will make a room feel overly dark, which a lot of people hate. And Grand Beige misses that 60 mark ever so slightly, so I figured it was a tangent worth mentioning. The color itself has a pretty interesting name because to me, all you need to do is change the word Grant to gray, and that's roughly what you get. Gray beige. It's a deep combination of grayish, giving you the slightest warm green undertone to add a comforting yet kind of contemporary coloration. A lot of C words. Contemporary color coloration. Alliteration is my favorite thing ever. Actually, no, paint colors are. I remember when green undertones used to scare people away because they were more comfortable with those more undersaturated gray colors that leaned a bit bluey in some cases. They were very popular, you know, five, 10 years ago. But I find that green undertone neutrals are some of the easiest paint colors to work with. And that's because of how grounded they tend to feel. I mean, if you had a lot of plants in your space, for example, which is, a nice thing to have, right? Some life, some plant life. Then your walls may end up feeling kind of greeny anyway because of the light reflecting off of those plants. So you might as well double down in the form of a green undertone in your wall color. Now going from interior walls to exterior facades, Grant Beige is a fantastic exterior color that will lighten up considerably when used outside. It's kind of crazy how much having the sun as your primary light source <laughs> changes how a color looks. I mean, I'm sorry, as nice as your brand new pot lights are, they're not really gonna compete with the super giant in the sky. Uh, actually, James, the sun is closer to being classified as a yellow dwarf or uh, a G2. All right, let's talk color pairings here because we have four of them ranging from white all the way to a dark one. Let's start with the light color pairing, which to me 
becomes the accent color in this little palette we're putting together, which usually isn't the case, but when your paired color is Hawthorne yellow, it absolutely is the case. Pretty much any accurate representation of yellow in paint will look pretty vibrant and bold. It comes with the territory of being the most energetic color in color theory. But what makes Hawthorne yellow so popular, even to this day, is its kind of soft edge that comes from its balanced approach. As saturated as it is, it's also pretty light with a 71.33 LRV, and this makes it feel more like a tint of yellow that has some white mixed in. We're not talking full egg yolk here. Hawthorne yellow has a little bit of egg white mixed in as well. And this makes it so satisfying to use both inside and outside. I love using Hawthorne yellow as an accent color, whether it's on a front door or in an eye-catching entryway of your home. But again, because of that softness, a lot of people will use it on not just the front door, but the entire exterior of their house. Or instead of maybe an accent wall inside, you just paint your whole kitchen with it if you want a little extra kick in the keister while you're cooking up a storm. Still though, a color as striking as Hawthorne Yellow will make Grant Beige feel that much more settled and neutral and polite and perhaps a bit more gray leaning as well. If you're not sure how to use this kind of yellow in paint form, then you can use the much easier implementation by incorporating it as part of your 10% color, maybe through the use of accessories, like a nice bright yellow coffee table book, or perhaps a chunky knit throw. God, I love those things. Smash the like button if you're team chunky knit. Mm. Our next color pairing switches back to neutral with AF100 Pashmina. So already we see a difference in depth with an LRV of 44. We're also starting to notice a little more of an emphasis on brown with this color compared to beige. So there's still a little bit of a back and forth between warm and cool, but instead of grayish, Pashmina ventures towards taupe territory ever so slightly. So you're starting to see a tiny bit less of a green undertone and a hint of a red undertone this time. It's definitely not all the way there, but there's just a bit more of it compared to Grant Beige. It might be a better fit alongside grays, browns, and taupes compared to the yellows, creams, beiges, and even greens that Grant Beige will fit alongside a little bit easier. Also, being the darker color of the two, you may have to be more cognizant of how much lighting you're getting when using Pashmina. You wanna make sure that your end result won't feel darker than you intended. And that's because Pashmina is kind of on the darker side of midtones. The dark color pairing is one of my most underrated gray paint colors that not enough people talk about. It's called Amherst Gray, and it really walks the line between warm and cool. Although in practical use, I do find that it favors the cool side ever so slightly, but I don't even like to describe it like that. I just kind of feel it's an earthy gray that has an organic composition that won't really run the risk of turning blue, which can come across as more of an artificial metallic gray. I don't know, I just find that dark grays with just a bit of brown and green is a much more easy to use option compared to something that's dominated by a blue undertone. Amherst Gray also has an 18.8 .8 LRV, which means it's dark, but given enough warm lighting, it could really change the look of this color to more of a taupe that I love, love, love. Floral white is the off-white I would recommend alongside Grand Beige. And with this off-white, there is the slightest green undertone, but really it's just a delicate and peaceful white with an 80 LRV that will work wonders on the trim for something other than plain old pre-mixed white, which I'm sure we're all kind of tired of. Now what about Manchester Tan? That's a color that often gets compared to Grand Beige, so how do they differ? Well, I would argue that Manchester Tan is actually more beige than Grant Beige because it has less of that gray aspect, it's also a bit lighter and appears a tad warmer in practical use. But what's really cool are these pretty new neutral paint colors by Benjamin Moore that can offer you something different. I honestly love these colors. And I love this whole new color collection they put together. 